what really is transparency? Um, again, it's not more information. As a matter of fact, more information can actually work in the opposite cycle. Transparency is, think about earnings. It comes with a signal. As a matter of fact, earnings generates two signals when they're announced. The first is the sustainability in your earnings power of your business. I call that the real signal. But also earnings has fluctuations due to factors beyond management's control. Let's call that noise. So information is included in an earnings announcement. Some of it is a signal about management's franchise val uh, value, their business, uh, their business proposition, their ability to um, operationalize and capitalize on their business proposition. But some of that earnings is really just a function of noise. Now, what's important is to strengthen the signal in the earnings and to eliminate the noise so that earnings convey a very clear picture to, about management's talent, the firm's competitive advantage. And therefore, if that's the case, it becomes a stronger predictor of the future. Now, this sounds like great theory, right? Things that I might teach in an MBA class, but let's look at the data. In this case, what we've done, we've done this work on, on companies at large, but what we've done now within Guy Carpenter is just pull out the property and casualty in space. And so we're looking at both insurance and reinsurance companies, and this data set that I have with you today are US and Bermuda. We've done the same work on European and Asian companies, but because of data lags, I'm always one year behind. In this case, I'm fairly current. And what we did is just created a regression between the average ROE and the price to book over a time period representing about 24 quarters. Now, there's 50 companies here, and so we group them into three. The first group have um, very low volatility in their ROEs. Their ROEs were very persistent, quarter after quarter after quarter, and they are depicted by the green regression line. The next group, there was moderate volatility in their ROEs, and they're depicted by the yellow. And of course, the red are the companies that had high volatility. And we didn't do anything cute here. We just took the companies and divided them up into three groups based on the standard deviations in their ROEs over this time period. Now, here's what's so interesting. Once you clear the cost of capital, and let's just say this is the perceived cost of capital, somewhere in this range, but once you clear the cost of capital, for every dollar in ROE, if you have persistent earnings, you're going to get a much higher price to book. Okay, so the market is saying we value persistency in earnings once you have cleared your once you have cleared your cost of capital. You know, when you're now along the red line, it's almost flat. So what the street's saying is, thanks for the ROE, I appreciate it, but I have no idea if it's persistent. I don't know if it was just good luck. I'm not confident that it was sustainable, so we'll give you a pickup, a one for one in your price to book. What's so fascinating about having done the regression this way is look what happens when you're not clearing your cost of capital. If you're not clearing the cost of capital, obviously you're not creating economic value. And so what we see from the data, what we infer from the data, is that the markets are saying, I just rather you have volatility because maybe you'll get lucky and there'll be a one or two quarters where you'll clear your cost of capital and that's better than nothing, okay? So the market actually values, if you will, volatility when you're not creating value in the first place.